All right, so I'm at copilot.microsoft.com. Now it's telling me that I'm logged into my work um, up here in the top. I'm gonna toggle mm -hmm. over to the web. When I go into the web experience, um, I'm still connected with my work account, but my conversation's protected. It's not gonna save anything that I, I talk about here. It's not going to train the model. I can't get back to any previous conversations. But as part of this, I can click notebook up here in the uh, uh, in the top. And this is part of the um, Copilot experience formerly known as Bing Chat Enterprise. Um, it's now just called um, Microsoft Copilot. And you can do this in an enterprise environment, but you can also just do this as a uh, general public. If you were to open up just your web browser, not logged in with a, a school or work account, you could just go to copilot.microsoft.com and you should see the notebook option there as well. And you can take advantage of that. And the notebook is um, does a couple of things. Now we briefly covered this previously. Um, and one of the things that it does is, let me just go back real quick. When you start prompting initially, You've got about 2000 characters that you can use as part of the prompt that or the ask that you have of Copilot right down here. When you toggle over into the notebook scenario, that actually increases to 18,000 characters. So significantly uh, um, more characters that um, that you're going to be able to, uh, to work with. But the cool thing about this is that you're going to be able to go through a prompting scenario. So you could start with a basic prompt and then you could work your way up into um, something better. So um, we did some examples of this uh, um, in the previous uh, deep dive uh, that, uh, that we had. Um, let me see if I don't have that one pulled up, um, but we did some examples of it. And so uh, the thing about this is you can use it to fine tune your prompt. You can start with something basic and then you can drill down a little bit more. So um, tell me about Copilot for M365. Very basic, very general question. It's going to go and it's going to um, start responding and give me that information. But keep in mind, I've got 18,000 characters over here that I could use. I could paste in a pretty large document. Yeah. And get some feedback You're only using that. 30 right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you see that like what's coming back here is just kind of a bunch of text, right? It's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's informing Andy individually, right? Mm -hmm. So a way that he could make this a little bit better is he could add some context around, tell me about Copilot for M365, um, write it as a, you know, um, Civil War style letter to you know a soldier's wife or something ridiculous like that right he can make it more fun by like changing the format in it or like give it to me as a, a poem or something like that uh something i use a lot is write it like a blog post so that it's kind of got like a hook it makes it more interesting to read uh, i like learning about something in like blog post format for example so that would be one way you kind of take something good and you make it better right and then making something great would be putting some constraints on it and some more expectations on it like hey write this as a blog post but focus on you know uh just the you know modern collaboration apps like microsoft teams and loop and whiteboard right um and then focus on the more traditional apps like word excel powerpoint you could kind of like split the topic and get more information about different areas of Copilot, for example. So those are ways that you can kind of go back, see on the right, yeah, the right hand side, what comes out of Copilot and like, it's eh, not really what I want. Go tweak it and see how it changes. It's almost like, do you remember um, W3 schools where they've got like that CSS builder and you're like learning HTML for the first time. And it's like, it shows you the example and it, and you can play over on the left-hand side and it's like, make the text green and it becomes green, you know, make it bold. Like that's essentially what you're doing is you're going back and you're making the prompt better. You're stripping things out. You're kind of going back and forth and you're seeing the result on the other side. So that actually that popped in my mind just now, like think of it kind of like, when you were learning HTML through like W3 schools. Exactly. And as we're doing this, one thing we should point out, we're iterating 
and that's one of the things that I really like about Copilot. And so what I can kind of iterate quickly through a single prompt here and kind of get a one shot um, out of this. But um, to John's point, this this is very much like W3 schools. You get a real time output as you're doing it. You can see that the what it's going to essentially um, generate uh, from that. And then you can use that to kind of figure out, OK, uh, optimize a single prompt. And when we talk about prompting, there, there's a skill that you'll develop over time. Um, there's a zero shot, there's a one shot, and there's a few shot. And a zero shot is just a basic question. You're not giving it any context. You're not giving it any grounding. You're not giving it any um, outcome. You're just saying, what is this? You're asking a question. Summarize mm -hmm. this. That's essentially a zero shot. A one shot is you're giving it an example. You're telling it, um, I want you to do this thing. And this is kind of how I want it to come out. A few shot is you give it a few different um, uh, uh, examples and then it's able to output based off of that. And that's kind of what we're doing here is we're iterating through a good, better, best scenario. Each time we go back and rebuild the prompt, we're maybe adding a, a goal to it. We're adding some context to it. We're telling it the desired outcome. We're telling it what the audience that this particular prompt is going to apply to. And this helps us to create like a really good one shot prompt that we can use um, that could be uh, applicable in a couple of business cases. Now, in this specific example here, I've told it, tell me about Copilot for Microsoft 365, which apps are supported and what features. Then I told it, go ahead and organize it by app include a description for each app, the audience is going to be an IT user for a small, and I didn't say business, but I think it's, it's was able to interpret that. And look at the results. And if you're watching the video live, pause the video and jump back 30 seconds or a minute and look where we started and look at the outcome that we're actually getting out of this now. So this particular prompt is very much for a specific topic. Tell me about Copilot for Microsoft 365, which apps are supported. But now we've kind of got the core of a prompt. We could take this and say, tell me about an insert app process topic. And you could remove the specific, in this case, Copilot for M365, and replace that with another topic. And then mm -hmm. uh, which apps, which features, that could be for that particular topic. So we could make this reusable across some different business uh, information or some different business processes. And we have an idea of what the outcome is going to look like. Now we've got um, kind of an idea of what this will, uh, uh, the the format, the uh, the results are potentially going to be like. So now we can take this, maybe copy that, put it in our personal prompting notebook, and we could re uh, reuse it. So the notebook, really, mm -hmm. this is your playground. This is the Copilot playground. There's one in ChatGPT. There's a ChatGPT playground. It does kind of the same thing. They've taken that concept and applied it over here. And this is a great place to just explore different prompts and see what you can do with it and what the outcomes uh, can can potentially be. Yeah, that's a really good point that you brought up too. Is like think about reuse, right? Um, as you start looking at Copilot Lab in particular, notice that they've got a bunch of placeholders in their prompts. Like, what's the latest with person? You know, give me details about file. And those are placeholders, you know, so as you get a good prompt, you could start extracting out the specifics, replace them with placeholders like what he's got on screen right now. And now you're starting to build something that you could share with other people and all of that. So, um, Andy, you talked about um, like saving in your personal <laughs> prompt notebook what do you use for saving prompts that you're like i don't if i went away from this page it goes away so you want to save that right do you have a system for doing that yet so i don't <laughs> I, I have to admit like i'm not saving my stuff and i should be so i'm going to walk you through how it started and then kind of walk you to where i am today okay so for me this is where i started a lot of my prompt journey this thing chat gpt came on the scene in november of 2022 i think i heard about it in like december i started uh, working with it from there and if you go back through my chat history over here it just goes on and on and on and thankfully you know it loads faster search has gotten faster but you see i save a lot of my conversations and i go back and i revisit them um uh, mm -hmm. over and over and over um again that's kind of the starting point 
Um, that's mm -hmm. where a lot of my prompts are saved. It's not exactly efficient. Um, for one, there's not a search built into the web interface, but there is on the mobile app. So I could go on the mobile app uh, with chat mm -hmm. GPT and I can search for a keyword or phrase and like, I can get back to something pretty quickly um, over there. I wish uh, we had folders. Like I've tried folders, some like Google Chrome plugins and stuff. Yeah, folders, you know? tagging, or search on the web for ChatGPT yeah. would just be awesome. Um, but like I find myself like going back and like revisiting um, information over here um, quite frequently. Um, like one that uh, yeah, I've done, done a uh, used it as a as a demo a bunch of times. So, um, this is you know a, a basic um, explain this and then uh, follow up. That's my preferred method, like when I'm learning a prompt. So like I, I go through the iteration, I go through the conversation and then I get to a point and I say, I ask the the, the bot, whether it's Copilot or ChatGPT, I ask it, what? how could I prompt against this? How could I um, uh, prompt against uh, or, or, or make this conversation into a prompt to, to simplify this process? So like I'll have a conversation and then I'll ask it for give me an example of a prompt that I could reuse for this. That's kind of mm -hmm. how it started. Now, as we got co-pilot uh, and I got into the EAP with my organization back in like August, September of last year, as we got into... Um, Got into that um, with Copilot for Microsoft 365. You, we were able to start saving our chats. We weren't in the, uh, able to in the very beginning. It came pretty quickly in the EAP. So this is a demo tenant that I'm in. I can go back and I can revisit um, a previous chat or a previous conversation. So like I can get back to maybe the prompt uh, that I worked with. Again, um, not a, there's not a search built in. I does save my prompts. It's not exactly the most efficient way to to get back to to what I want, but at least my prompt history is saved, and so I can go back and revisit the conversation if I can remember a keyword or a phrase that's actually like built into the title of it. And sometimes I have to like go back and and revisit these a few times, so I can do that yeah. over here uh, as part of um, Copilot for. Uh, M365, or if I'm just doing co-pilot with my personal account, I get that uh, that history as well, and I can go back and I can revisit it. The next step, though, is once you start kind of figuring out some of the the ins and outs, um, the next thing you need to do is like you start capturing those. Um, so like I would go back and say, hey, you know, this was a pretty good prompt. I like the way that this thing like turned out here. I don't want to have to search it. So I need to find a way to save it. And that's kind mm -hmm. of um, where we start getting into organizing prompts. Um, how do we go from here to, to kind of the next step? And so we mentioned um, Copilot Labs. Copilot Labs is great. It's kind of a, a, a basic getting started prompts to try. My feedback to Microsoft would be on this. Since I'm logged in and you know who I am, maybe I could save some of my own prompts here. Maybe I could save some prompts that I want to share with some other teammates mm -hmm. in the organization. For me, if we could find a happy medium between Copilot Lab and the notebook uh, that's built into um, Copilot over here, I think that would be really cool. Or if notebook would maybe have like a, a, a chat history um, where I could save prompts off to the side and kind of revisit iterating against that, I think that would um, that would be really cool. But I've got this this prompt that I've done and now I want to save it. So I really um, the shortcomings, I think, with Copilot Lab are you've got to be like logged in to get to it. We mm -hmm. can't publish to it. We're basically there to consume. We can bookmark, which is great. But like I want to be able to do a little more. So maybe in the future, Microsoft will uh, will do that. And I think a couple of additional shortcomings we'd like to see is maybe some uh, a few more filters of uh, filtering by role service line, department, business application. Um, I think that would be huge for Copilot Labs. Another thing that I think would be huge for Copilot Labs is the um, a rating or an upvoting process. I kind of think about like the Power yeah. Platform, the Power Apps and Power Automate when you look at a template, tells you like who published it, the number of times that it's potentially been used. I think that's a great scenario. But when I think about rating and upvoting, I think about gamification. And I like the gamification process. Who can create the best prompt? Who can create the most 
um, popular prompt in the organization. That gets people to share and anything we can do to get people to share to kind of help other other people, I think would be huge. So I'd really like to see um, some um, um, updates to maybe Copilot Lab to uh, increase some of the rating, the upvoting, most popular highlighted um, rated filters and the gamification process of that. Mm -hmm. But outside of Copilot Lab, what are some things that we can do to organize and work with our prompts? So as our <laughs> friend uh, of the show uh, says, saving to a OneNote notebook because of the built-in search yeah. capability. That is one of the tools that I've explored. Um, I know if we go, uh, we go back, I'm going to go way back and I'm going to grab this one. Our buddy uh, Daryl is going to be a huge advocate for uh, Microsoft Loop. Daryl, yep. don't worry, I got something coming up for you. But I'm thinking about like, <laughs> I'm already in the Microsoft ecosystem. What tools do I have at my disposal? And then I think about the audience. Is it me? Is it we? And in this particular scenario, let's think about um, a little bit of me and a lot of we. Um, the two main things that jump out at me are Microsoft List and Microsoft Loop. Um, I think yep. those are the two that are going to help to bridge both of those scenarios. Uh, we could use a one note notebook, but um, I think that's going to add a step or two to the to the process. I think that's good for personal productivity. I think that's good for my like maybe notes around a prompt that I've used and some of the outcomes and, and maybe links to where I've actually used that. I think that's great. But in a sharing scenario where I, I've used this prompt, it worked really well and I want to make it available to my colleagues. I think list and uh, loop are going to be the two tools that I would recommend uh, for users and to uh, to try to drive users uh, uh, to. Uh, 